my name is Tess. For today, I want to show you how to make um, a mug, a cup, or a mug. They're both made the same way, but a mug has a handle, and a cup usually usually doesn't. Um, for now, though, I want to center the clay, but this clay has air, and to work that, to work out the air, I want to knead the clay. So I will show you a much better view. So for now, you need to turn on closed captions. Here we go. And I spread my hands out just ever so slightly. And that helps bring in the newest layer through the center so that I'm working out all the air bubbles and I didn't feel any more air bubbles. You can feel them up against the palm of your hands pop. Now I'm just smoothing the clay out to start with my mug. I'm going to press my thumbs down to create the center. And I want to add quite a little bit of water in that little hole and press down. Now if you do this and you press down kind of at an angle like this, your thumb will never penetrate to the bat because your thumb can't extend much, at least mine can't, that much further down towards the bat. So I know that my clay bottom is going to be that thick. So my hands are right about here with the clay and when I press my thumb down that is as deep as it goes. You can go a little bit further if you feel like that doesn't give you enough leverage. Now what I'm going to do and what I had talked about the other day in one of my videos is opening up the center. So this is something that I didn't learn until much later on. And I was kind of bummed that I didn't learn this earlier. I'm going to open up the center. And some people do it with their fingers. Other people do it with their thumb. But do you see how I'm opening the hole and widening? I'm widening the inside at the base first so that I'm not left with this huge gnarly chunk of clay here on the side. Can you see how wide that is in there? And you don't have to leave everything here on the top. You can widen the top while you're at it. And then while you're down here and you have easy access, you can flatten out the bottom. So I'm going to take a sponge and clean this up so you can see this. I can also compress the bottom, which just means that I'm taking the sponge and I'm pressing straight down. That helps keep air bubbles out from the, the bottom so when it goes in the kiln, and you have pieces blow up, and usually it's the base of the piece that blows or cracks, has a, a hairline crack go through it. A lot of the times that's because air bubbles have formed. Okay, I'm trying to move the camera in a way where I'm not going to lose it. Okay. Now what I want to do is I am pressing on the inside with these two fingers and on the outside with this thumb and I'm guiding my thumb with this hand. Normally I will hold a sponge with water. My 
I feel like my camera keeps shrinking, so sorry guys. I need a better stand for my camera. One that can curl around and do all sorts of crazy stuff and like hold on to it so I'm not losing it. There we go. I think I got it. squeeze my fingers and pull up at the same time and remember sometimes you might get this where the top is uneven please don't worry about that right now you can use a pin tool to get rid of that I'm gonna go all the way back down grab some of the clay on the bottom pinch the clay and bring it up I can tell. Ooh, look at that. See that curl right there? I know that that's an air bubble. So, can I feel that? Yeah, it's a naughty air bubble. Ugh. Okay, at this point, I can pop that if I want to, or I can reneed this piece. So I'm going to re-knead this piece. I'm going to get rid of the water in the center so I'm not kneading in a bunch of, of water. And I'm going to squish the clay together. And I'm kneading again, so I'm pressing the clay, pressing it back down. Feeding it back up, pressing it back down, feeding it back up. Pressing it back down, feeding it back up, pressing it back down. And it's really kind of a bummer that this is such a small piece because you can't really see what my hands are doing. But you can there, so every time I need, I always go pretty tall up, and then I press down, and every time I press down, I always make sure that I press down and pull my hands away so that the, the piece in the center kind of grows up. I know, some people are going to have some pretty nasty minds when they see this. It's clay, get over it. Pressing down, feeding it back up, pressing it down, letting the center feed back up, pressing down. Do you, do you hear the air bubbles like popping? That's enough. I didn't hear any air bubbles the last time that I fed it back down. So I think I won't have any air bubbles. The only problem is now I've worked in some more water into the clay, so now it's gonna be pretty, pretty wet clay. And after a while, after kneading about three or four times, um, well, twice, actually, I would knead the clay twice and then give up after that. You would wanna knead it on a piece of cloth after that point to canvas canvas cloth and knead it by hand you know how you do the the ram horn knead again I'm gonna press down with my thumbs to make the hole I'm gonna open up the center and this time I just opened up the center and I just pressed down and then out with my thumbs 
I'm going to compress the bottom because now I really want to make sure that this doesn't crack. And you can tell the speed of my wheel is pretty good. At this point, because the clay is still pretty condensed, I can run the wheel at a pretty fast rate. Once I start throwing the walls though, so I'm pressing, I'm using these two fingers on the inside, my thumb on the outside, and the sponge to kind of guide my thumb. And again, don't worry about the top. You can always use a pin tool at the top to, to even that out. I'm going down to the bottom to get some of the clay out of the bottom. Now I'm going to slow this thing down, though, just a little bit. Okay. That really went wobbly on the top. I'm not too worried about that, though. This is one of the negatives of re-kneading clay. Sometimes you do get air bubbles or hard spots or really soft spots in the clay. And again, I do not have a needle tool, so I am going to use what I have on hand. Um, I've got this little pin tool guy. He's got a sharp end on one side. So a needle tool is what I would normally use here to cut the top off. I'm going to, with this, with the sharpest point, since the wheel is turning this way, right? So the wheel is turning whoop, that way and out. I will slowly drag this needle tool into the clay as it's turning, marking it and cutting through as it goes and then I'll pull up really quickly. And then I'll smooth out the rest of the rim with my fingers just by pressing on it. And I'm taking off any, this is more like slip that was sitting around on the side because it was re-kneaded clay. It's pretty soft stuff. I had re-kneaded it previously. This is the stuff that I used the other week when I taught my last lesson. So this clay is pretty soft. And I'm just taking one more pass just to lift the walls up a little bit and to clean them at the same time. Now, as you can see, the lip still has a little bit of an uneven flavor to it. And right there, actually, that looks pretty good. I can still see a slight something something to it. And this sponge is super big, so a trick with sponges. This is a clay or tile sponge, you know, one of those great big box ones. You can get these at Lowe's and cut them apart or tear them apart and make smaller sponges for yourself. So I'm going to tear it apart. I just tore it apart. Hey, this little guy is going to go down in here and clean this thing out. Next thing I want to do, since I'm going to add a handle onto this, I'm, I'm going to let this dry just a little bit, not a whole lot. And you can see there's some bubbling issues going on right here. So what do you do when you see that? When you've kneaded your clay and you find some little air bubbles, this is what I do. Pop. I just popped it. And then I'm going to squish it. Where's the other one? Right there gonna pop it and then I'm gonna squish it and then I'm gonna come down here really lightly 
and just clean it up so that they can't be seen on the outside. And I don't see any bubbles, do you? I do see a little wave in the clay. Mm, right there. It just it just went around. Right. Wait, wait for it. Wait for it. Right there, maybe. Now I'm now I'm seeing things. I'm looking through the camera. Okay, yeah, I'm not gonna worry about it. It's gonna be so minute, and especially if you make a design on the mug. Uh, mug lips. So this one is a little thick. It's kind of a square lip. Uh, some people like really thin lips. Some people like fatter lips. Ha <sighs> Sounds like you're kissing somebody. Anyway, okay. For the lip for the mug, I tend to like lips that have kind of this flat curl out and then a round edge kind of around on the edge. So here I'll show you in just a quick second. So it kind of curls out like a that, like a that. I like them with a slight curl. You don't have to do yours this way. You can do yours straight up and straight down. You can do yours with a slight curl. I only like it with a slight curl like this um, because my husband has a mustache and this somehow helps with that. I don't know. That's what he told me. So because this is going to be a mug and I'm not going to be flipping it on its bottom probably to do a proper foot, I am going to trim a few, just like a chunk of the clay here. So I'm going to take this tool and same thing as the pin tool where I slowly guided it in. This actually has a kind of a cutting edge here. I'm going to slowly... cut down what I don't want and then I'm going to keep I can go in this way too and go against it to, to scrape off what is left but and then I'm going to slowly walk walk away walk away walk away yeah that didn't work out too well did it because I'm trying to show you all in TV land how to do this and slowly walk away. And it would help if I was running the wheel just a little bit quicker. Okay. There we go. And what I mean by a footing is I mean I won't, because my handle may or may not extend the top of the lip of this mug. I may or may not be able to turn this over and put a footing on it. So I want it straight up, straight down with not any extra chunky stuff here that flashes out like that. And the last thing to do, to take these hot little cutter wires. So everyone's scared of these. I understand, especially if you're a student. I have gone through a piece way too quickly. This is what I do. Take it in one hand, put it at the end right here, hold on to it and twist. Okay. Okay. Wait, let's do this again. Okay. Take it in your hand. My hands are all slimy, so it's hard to do this twist like that so that you have less of it. If it helps, you can do it like this and then just twist like that. So you're, you're rolling your hand into it. And then that way, all you have is that much exposed. So I've got it held in between my pinky and my ring finger on this side. I've got it twisted around my hand on this side, but I've only got that much of this cheese cutter cord exposed. Thumb goes down. So I'll show you from this side. Thumb goes down. Thumb goes down. Do you see how tight that is? And then you just walk it through. 
making sure that you keep your thumbs on the bat and that you keep this pulled tight. Okay. The worst ones are plates, of course, because plates cover such a, a large area. Super scary when it's a plate. So that is it for the mug. I will come back in a minute to show you how to pull the handle. Pulling a handle. Handle. So all I did was I cut a chunk of clay out of a block. Don't really need all that much. I mean, honestly, this is going to be a small, pretty small mug. So this handle's overkill. But what I do want, though, is I want something to hold on to. I'm going to dip it in water. And then I'm going to hold it like this. And in between this finger and this finger right here, I'm just going to squeeze. And just alternate sides. Alternate sides. Dip it back in the water again. Squeeze and pull. And I know someone's going to look at this and be like, that's kind of gross. Yeah, I know. Everything in clay you can take the wrong way. Believe me. I've taught it for years. Students have said everything under the sun. And it no longer surprises me. I'm getting rid of that piece. Didn't need it. The only reason why I'm kind of alternating this back and forth, back and forth, is because, believe it or not, when you're squeezing this, it squeezes finer on this side than it does on this side. And I try to squeeze it as evenly as I can, but sometimes it just, that just doesn't happen. Your hands aren't made perfectly. It'll take a while to figure this out. It took me a while to figure out how to pull handles. Okay. So that is my, that is my handle. And because right now it's super wet, what I'm going to do is, ooh, let's get you over here. I am going to, ooh, la, la squish this. Do you see why now I left this big chunk of clay right, right there? I left a big chunk of clay because in that way I can squish it like that and kind of let it dry like that. So it's got this nice curve. Of course, the rest of this will end up being curved, but that helps keep it in place for now. And I will be back to show you how to attach it to the mug. All right, putting the handle on. So this knife is Overkill. This is a knife that I made for my forge. It's the knife that I have available in my studio to me. I'm gonna take this piece, the handle that I pulled, and I've let this dry for not long enough. Um, I've let it sit here in the studio for maybe, oh, an hour or so. I will cut right about there. See how I left some of a, a knob here left on the, the clay? And again, you can cut with any kind of a knife. That's, that's overkill. And I will take and score the clay where I want the handle. So I'm just going to etch it ever so slightly and score it. I'm going to score the the piece. And I have found that for me, putting on handles while they're a little wet is better than putting on a handle that has dried out and adding slip. So one of the reasons why I would add a handle now is that I don't have to really add slip. This piece, because the walls are pretty thin on this mug, I want to be very careful, but this is as wet as the the handle is. And I actually really don't need that much clay. I think I will cut off a little bit more clay. So taking my larger than life knife, 
and cutting it and then just scoring it just in case. You never know. Just in case, score it. Press and smudge it into the mug. So the problem you will see pretty evident is that since the mug's walls are still pretty pliable, it's super easy to bend these if you do it while it's this wet. But I've learned that my handles don't get as many cracks if I do it this wet. I'm going to try my best not to press the walls too hard. I'm just kind of putting my thumb inside the mug to support it. And then if you're doing this on a wheel, I actually do suggest if you're going to do this while it is this pliable, this, this wet of clay, you might want to do it on a wheel so you can make your rim even again right over the, the handle. I can take my sponge and clean it up. On the inside and on the outside. It's the other beautiful thing too is that you can really get a nice looking handle if you're adding it on with this much water still left in the clay. Now I haven't moved the mug, so that's kind of an important thing to think about. I have not moved the mug off of the bat yet. And I haven't... I'm gonna try to put my hand around it. My hands are huge, so... There's that. You always want to <laughs> make the handle for the size the person that you're making the handle for. Make a really big handle. Now, if you are doing this and your handle is like slumping over because it's actually thinner at the top than this, you can put tissue paper in here between the two to hold your handle up. Oh, beautiful idea. I don't need to do that because my handle is actually holding, which is nice. And a lot of this that's left to do is to just smudge the handle in at the bottom. So unlike the top where I scored it, you can score the bottom. I'm not saying don't score it. Go ahead and score the bottom. That little tail piece just fell off. Um, if you really have to, you can take your larger than life knife and cut off what you need. Always be mindful if you do this on the bat, and again, if the piece is still pretty, pretty soaked with water and it's not dry, then you can, might not be a bad idea to go back underneath and swipe it with the cheese, cheese cutter again. pushed in my lip here. I actually think it would look kind of cool if my lip was a little uneven right over the handle. Give it a different look. Clean up the rest. You see, though, that the blending 
actually went pretty quickly because it's not a um, not dry. It is an hour off of the putter's wheel. It's just enough where um, just dry enough where it won't crumble or fall on its own. This side needs to be cleaned up just a little bit. Didn't pay attention to it. So, secret to handles, putting them on without them cracking off. And again, I would suggest doing this on the wheel. That way you can kind of reform your lip once it's put on. And a lot of people put their handles on lower than I do. Uh, this is a big, pretty decent sized handled mug. So, I'm making the lip look really bad. See, this is some trouble you can get into with doing this, is that the lip will come out looking pretty, pretty gnarly if you play with it too much. And the only reason why I am is because I'm not happy with the way it looks. You know what? Screw this. We're just going to do this. Ooh, that's kind of cute, actually. And, oh yeah, I just dumped a bunch of water in my studio that y'all can't see. Stuck my knee in something. We're going to add one of those little round knobby things that you see on mugs. So I don't know if you've ever seen these on handles, the little thumb holder. Yeah. That's what happens, right? when you mess up on a lip. You just add to it. Make it look a little better. Add a little knobby guy. Where on a thumb. Little thumb spot right there. There we go. I'm going to hum to myself. I don't have music on today. I don't know why. There we go. Okay. I know that a lot of potters are out there right now and they're just like no we need to use slip but again if the clay is not a um, leather hard you really do not need to use slip believe me you will not see any cracks in your handles I used to find cracks in my handles all the time and it just pissed me off until I figured this trick out. I got tired of it one day and threw one on right after I had thrown the, the mug. And I was so glad that I did that. So, there we go. We kind of made up for a mistake and added a thumb, little thumb holder there. Hope that looks okay from your guys' angle. There we are. We have a mug with a handle.
that won't crack in the kiln.